Hi and welcome. This week I'm reviewing the Moto Guzzi V11 Le Mans. Now the V11 series uh, of uh, Moto Guzzi's was first released in the late 90s and uh, the final model I think was re released in about 2006. It was a change uh, after the first uh, couple of models in that they actually lengthened the wheelbase of the bike and they did it at the steering head here. It actually, the frame actually protrudes slightly further out of the tank than on the earlier models. But essentially they're all pretty much the same. Now the V11 is actually based on an earlier model by Moto Guzzi. Um, in essence it uses a very similar frame to the four valve Daytona which came out in around 1993 and that was followed by a two valve model, the 1100 Sport. But they all use the single beam backbone frame of course the most impressive part of this motorcycle and what really um, hits you in the face when you first see it of course is the Moto Guzzi transverse uh, V-twin engine. This two valve engine is probably one of the uh, final iterations of the big block two valve engine. It did soldier on a little bit longer. It appeared in the 1100 Breva, um, also the first model Grisso and the 1200 Sport. But uh, this is probably one of the most refined versions of the big block two valve motor and you certainly notice it on the road. They've certainly taken a lot of weight off the flywheel and lightened everything up so that the motor is a bit more free revving. Though being a two valve motor, you're not really gonna get super power up top. There's only really about 90 brake horsepower uh, listed on the specifications for this engine. And um, you certainly don't really notice any lack of power when riding it. The motor really loves to sit on the torque curve and running the motor anything from uh, three and a half thousand RPM up to near its red line and it's got lots of get up and go and certainly more than adequate for the road. Now the fuel injection system is quite modern for its era. It's a twin throttle body setup with uh, one injector on each side. The only difference is that uh, in this era there were no stepper motors to look after idle mixture when the engine is cold so that there's a fast idle lever on the left hand handlebar. Now this bike is fitted with a stainless steel 2 into 1 into 2 exhaust system. This particular one is also fitted with Agostini mufflers. Uh, they also have removable baffles if you want to get bit, a bit more of a note out of the exhaust. Now there's nothing quite like a good V-twin exhaust and certainly Moto Guzzi's have a really great exhaust note when you can liberate that with a, a good set of mufflers. Now the major change between this and the earlier Daytona and 1100 Sports is the fact that it has a six-speed gearbox over the five-speed gearbox in those earlier models. Uh, the six-speed gearbox was also designed to allow the, uh, the shaft drive to be put a little bit more outboard to allow for a larger section rear tyre. Now the final drive is quite unique to these bikes uh, and the system first appeared on the Daytona and the 1100 Sport in that there's a separate torque arm to the bevel drive itself to reduce any form of torque wind up of the uh, rear suspension due to uh, heavy acceleration. The only disadvantage of this system over the later Kark system that appears on the Grisso and 1200 Sports is that the universal joints and shaft are exposed unlike the later bikes and unlike the earlier bikes and that probably will reduce their service life a little bit. Suspension wise we have 40 millimeter upside down forks on the front which are adjustable for compression and rebound damping. You've got compression adjustment on the left hand leg and rebound on the right. At the rear we've got a Satch monoshock which is again adjustable for spring preload and also damping. Now I found the suspension on this bike to be quite firm. It's actually quite a firm sports suspension setup. Um, it's certainly it, it comes into its own as you go faster but at low speed it does jiggle around a little bit you know it's not designed for comfort it's designed for sports handling. Wheel wise we've got cast alloy three spoke wheels at both ends 
The front tyre is a 120-70-17 and the rear runs a 170-60-17. Braking wise we've got a twin 320mm discs at the front with uh, two four piston Brembo calipers uh, and the bike is fitted with uh, braided lines. Now this is a top braking setup for the uh, early 2000s and even by today's standards it's still a pretty, pretty good brake. The only difference you'll find is that there's a, a little bit more lever pressure required uh, to get a quick stop compared to modern brakes. But you've got to remember that bikes of this era aren't fitted with any form of anti-lock braking, so it was prudent to have a bit more pressure required uh, to uh, really haul you up. The rear brake is a single 282mm disc with a two-piston caliper. Again, it's got a braided line fitted. Now I found the rear brake uh, to actually be really good on this bike. Um, it, it's certainly not totally ineffective the way it often can be on modern sports bikes. Part of that probably is due to the fact that there's a little bit more weight on the back of this bike than the average modern sports bike. And you can certainly use the rear brake quite effectively when you're dipping into corners. Now the instruments are quite nice analog dials. We've got an analog speedo with very much a traditional trip meter and odometer in there. And on the right hand side we've got an analog tachometer and in the middle we've got a number of lights for neutral uh, indicators and such forth. The switch gear itself is uh, quite modern fare and uh, certainly you'll see versions of this switch gear even on modern bikes. Now the finish on these bikes is good, uh, paintwork has a nice finish to it and all the little detail bits and pieces on the bike really show attention to detail. Now I did find the seat fairly firm, it's certainly more sports than touring orientated. There's a pigeon seat under this cowl at the back here. So what's it like on the road? Well I would have to classify this really as a GT or Grand Tourer type sports bike. You know this bike is designed for long sweeping curves and, uh, and motorway speeds. I found the half fairing on the Le Mans really good and certainly the curve of the screen was such that I got very little buffeting on my helmet at speed. The handling is relatively conservative. Uh, it's not a quick steering bike. You do require a little bit of counter steer to get it into tight corners, but for long sweepers, you just knock it into the corner and it just sits there through the corner. The, uh, foot peg position is actually quite high so you've got really good ground clearance if you're into scratching and the handlebars are certainly uh, slightly high clip-ons they're very much sport orientated personally I would have preferred it if those clip-ons had been just a little bit higher for comfort for longer trips but I'm sure that is something that uh, you could change if you so wish there's certainly plenty of room uh, underneath this fairing to put in a slightly higher and maybe even a slightly uh, further back clip-on so who is this motorcycle targeted towards? I think it's targeted to someone, A, who has an interest in Moto Guzzi, and someone who's looking for really a GT sort of sports motorcycle. Something to cover mileage with um, at speed, you know, go through long sweeping corners on A-grade uh, freeways and highways, and uh, probably not so much uh, taking in the really tight twisty stuff. Though in saying that, this bike is quite capable in the tight twisty stuff. It just requires a little bit more rider input to get it in and out of corners compared to a modern sports bike. So if you're looking for a motorcycle which has a nice relaxed motor with a bit of character, good braking, um, perhaps you should uh, take a ride on one of these and see if it's something that you should have in your garage. Well, I think that's about it for this particular review. Uh, and I'd like to thank A1 Motorcycles in Melbourne, Victoria for loaning me this Motor Guzzi Le Mans. And you'll find their contact details in the description below. I'll see you next time.